Hello, I'm Ruth Allen, Chief Executive of Baswa, and welcome to this first vlog of 2021. I'm delighted today to be joined by the Baswa Vice Chair, Lewis Roberts. Hello, Lewis. Hello, nice to see everyone. This vlog is an opportunity for you to meet Lewis, if you don't already know him. Um, and he's going to talk a bit about coming into the role and reflect on some of his experiences uh, in his work, uh, working in children's services. And we'll be talking together about some of the current challenges for social workers everywhere uh, working through COVID. Um, and then talking about some of our ambitions and best hopes for Badwa in 2021. So can I come to you now then, Lewis? And do you want to say a little bit about your background and kind of how you've ended up becoming vice chair of Badwa? Yeah, thanks, Ruth. Um, yeah, so a slightly uh, non-traditional uh, background uh, coming into social work. Um, I worked for several years in, in the education sector before retraining as a, a social worker, uh, slightly later in, later in life. Um, and it was these experiences working with young people um, in school settings that really motivated me to want to be a social worker. Um, when I was observing young people who were sort of disadvantaged by their life opportunities, um, and I was just seeing the, the education attainment gap um, impacted by people's, uh, by, by, by the children and, and, and families, um, you know, structural uh, issues. Yeah, so then I, I uh, worked for health and social care regulators as well. So uh, that was really relevant experience and, and I started to meet some social workers through that. Um, yeah, so I, I, I trained in social work and since I've become a, a, a qualified social worker, I've worked in a range of different sort of roles in children and family social work. Um, uh, most recently, I'm working in sort of a specialist adolescent fostering service. Um, but uh, from the point of, uh, of training, I've, I've been a Baswa member and, and I've been involved in lots of different sort of uh, uh, sort of committees and groups within, within Baswa and I've enjoyed every moment of that. Um, previously, I was the, uh, the chair of the, the North East um, Baswa branch um, and that's where, that's where I'm practicing and, and living up here in the North East of England. Um, and then I moved into the uh, Baswa England committee and uh, yeah, so since September I've taken on the, the, the vice chair role um, of Baswa Council. Brilliant. Well, it's, it's fantastic to have you um, in that role. Do you want to say a little bit more about why you wanted to become vice chair and, and joining council? It's quite a, it's a, it's a, quite a commitment um, and I think it's something that, you know, people give that to the membership really by taking on those, those roles. Um, would you like to say a little bit more about that and maybe about your, your initial impressions? <laughs> of yeah, being sure. Involved? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, as, as, I've, as I've mentioned, I'm, I'm in practice. I, 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 I work as a, uh, in a, in a statutory service four days a week um, and, I, and I'm supporting Baswa um, outside of that time. Uh, but I really wanted to get involved at a council level because I wanted to um, really have my voice heard and, and support others to have their voice heard so that we can we can make um, significant changes within the, the profession. Um, I mean, my, my initial impressions uh, as an honorary officer for Baswa uh, and working closely with, with Baswa Chair and the Baswa, Baswa uh, Treasurer is that there's some fabulous work going on and I think sometimes members don't always um, see that and appreciate that necessarily. Um, so the Baswa Council is uh, you know, it's a really diverse group of people, a really experienced group of people and the, the council meetings I've been to so far have been really lively and, and engaging um, and I'm really excited for uh, the next steps and, 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 and the, the action points that will come out of, of council. Yeah, no, th thanks for sharing that. And um, certainly it feels like council, I mean, it's it's been a, a tremendous group of people to work with ever since I've been in this role, actually. But, at the, you know, the new new intake, and of course, we're, we're really working on the diversity within council in terms of people from different ethnic backgrounds, different life experiences, different identities. Um, and I know that you're 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 getting kind of more involved in in that in that work as well, aren't you? Yeah, no. So I, I'm really excited. And um, before I came into the role, Baz had done lots of really good work around uh, quality, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and a and a quality, diversity, and inclusion advisory group had been set up, um, which includes staff members um, and and Baz were members. Um, you know, people who have. Uh, interest in, in anti-racism and anti-oppression and people who have lived experience of those of those issues so yeah I've been sort of the, the lead lead council member um, just uh, sort of 
helping with sort of admi administrative support and, and, and ensuring that that group um, remains structured. Um, and that group has, has recently uh, developed um, a number of transformational standards, which are, are, are being incorporated into the um, equality, diversity and inclusion action planning for yeah. council. And, and we're in a really exciting stage as an organisation because we're starting to see some of those conversations and some of those discussions now um, materialise into, into action. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there'll be much more about that to share um, over over coming months and, and, for, and for the long term. So thanks for, for referencing that and for your work, work to support it. Um, it's, it's, been, uh, it's getting off to a really good start. Um, I thought it would be quite interesting for you just to reflect on your experience um, of work at the moment in practice and in your role, um, what it's like uh, where you are in terms of COVID, in terms of changes to practice, challenges, workforce. Do you want to just reflect a bit on that? And you, I think you want, I think you're in that you are in the northeast, don't you? You mentioned that you were previously northeast branch chair, so it's kind of uh, you know what's happening up in the in the northeast and, and for you. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the northeast of England's a, an interesting area. You know, we have a lot of deprivation um, and, and sort of post-industrial in, in, uh, decline. And I think what we're seeing here is COVID is probably disproportionately impacting areas like the northeast of England. Um, I think the first thing I want to say is, as a, as a practicing children and family social worker, I, I just want to reassure members that, that Baswa is listening and, and does does see and hear the difficulties that social workers are having out in practice. Um, I'm hearing from, from colleagues and, and, and members about the sort of the, the mental strain um, of, of practicing over the last year um, during COVID. People are fatigued, tired, stressed, um, and, and, and they're doing a wonderful job keeping going, really. That, that, that is the, that's the sort of the truth of this matter. Um, sort of aligned to that is, the increased difficulties that we're seeing um, in terms of the people that we work with. So again, we're seeing children and families really, really struggling um, financially. Often, we're seeing families really struggling because people are losing jobs. Um, you know, it's been well publicised nationally in terms of sort of food poverty and the challenges that the families are facing. So my colleagues are doing a lot more, um, a lot more of that sort of work, having to put in practical um, support and ensuring that, that families have access to, to, to the basics that they need to keep to keep going. Um, in my sort of particular specialist area, working with, with teenagers in, in care, I'd just like to say a little bit on that, if, if I could. Um, just, I suppose, that teenagers in, in care, I would say, have been disproportionately impacted by COVID, um, particularly those who come into the care care sector um, slightly later. Um, education has been a real challenge. Um, we have lots of young people who just have, have very little structure to their day and, and foster carers and those who, who are supporting young people um, are having to work very, very hard to, to sustain things and to support um, young people. I think I'm noticing real inequality uh, in terms of access to education. Um, you know, we've got often got young people who've had very fragmented experiences uh, with, with school, um, and when when they're asked to work remotely, uh, it, it's just it's just a, a really difficult challenge. So that, that's one 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 area. So coming out of COVID, we're going to have to really think about um, sort of young people in in care and, and their educational experiences and how we can um, you know fill that gap and make sure they catch up. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, do you think that social work practice has kind of adapted or you know how, how has it changed in, in your experience uh, during COVID I mean we, there is lots of um, there's been a lot of need for obviously huge resilience which is which is finite if you're working in a really difficult situation and we, we, we are really really aware of the um, emotional and practical toll on, on social workers we're also aware that uh, social workers have kept going and have adapted and have tried new things, um, often in very difficult circumstances. It, have you seen some of that? And I guess also, is there anything that you can see as an opportunity for the future to kind of do things differently from what we're learning? I know it's, that's a massive question, so it's not a short conversation, but just a few thoughts on that, I think, would be interesting. Okay. I think... Um... 
at its best where, where teams are working uh, creatively and, and trying to problem solve and, 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 and come up with solutions to, to remote working and, and the difficulties of COVID, then yeah, we are. I think, um, mm -hmm. I, I think this technology, video technology can work, um, mm -hmm. can work well. I think particularly for those, the more formal aspects of social work, the, the sort of the, the, the statutory responsibilities and the meetings, I think that can work. But I think we have to recognise that, um, that sort of children and families that in my context where I'm working, that access to that technology isn't always um, fair and proportionate um, and I think I've been very sensitive to that so when, when I've conducted um, work remotely via video calls you know we've just got to make sure that that, that people are um, understanding that technology that they've they've got you know private space fair, you know a good space to be to be to be using that technology um, so that, that, that's one sort of reflection um, I think for, for practitioners, practitioners like myself who, who sort of pride themselves in working relationally um, and, uh, and, and, you know, getting close and aligning ourselves with the people that we support, it, it's just been a huge, a huge challenge. Um, you know, I think remote, remote ways of working can't replace that face-to-face that -face interaction. Um, but there are things you can do, and I think... Um, social workers have been probably been doing more regular check-ins with, with, with people who are they're supporting um so just you know having more informal contact you know sending text messages um very brief phone calls every couple of days just doing more pro you know proactive and um uh, forward-facing sort of uh check-ins um, and i think that's been well 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 received but i think we we, we can't shy away from the limitations of 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 of, of, of what we've been doing um, but i am in awe of, of colleagues who are continuing to um to produce you know the, the work that they have to and to support people in need yeah yeah absolutely i guess uh, one of the things coming out of this will be perhaps we'll have a very clear a clearer view about the importance of face-to-face -face work human contact we we've always known that's so important but we've got something incredible and uh, terrible in a way to compare it with because we haven't been able to do it but we will also have uh, some knowledge about where using those kind of technological solutions are helpful um, and you know the the, the, op the opportunities and, and the and the limits of that too so um it's great to hear a bit just, just to get a little sense of what's going on and i think we're hearing those sorts of messages across from uh, around the uk um, across different parts of social work, though, those challenges are, are really there. Um, one of the other uh, things that we, we said that we, we might talk about, Lewis, is, is the um, impact of the vaccine rollout. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously for, for the people that we work with, for, for society as a whole, and obviously for social workers as professionals, any, any thoughts on, on, on what you're seeing and how that's going and your hopes for, for that? Any concerns? Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose there's two areas of reflection. I suppose one is for social workers who have been, um, you know, going out and putting themselves at risk despite using personal protective equipment and, 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 and using risk assessment frameworks. There is still risk within, within those interactions. So I think it's really important that uh, the professions advocated for in terms of getting priority access to, to vaccines for those, for those um, social workers who, who want to access the, the vaccines and uh, I mean what I what we might be seeing is disproportionate um, access um, you know some some regions are ahead of others in terms of getting access to that and the rollout of, of those vaccines and, and also um, uh, services are having to prioritize access to certain um, certain certain uh, areas of the workforce as well so yeah. so i suppose it's just to to, to flag that up as, as a as a, as a con, you know potential concern for for social workers i think people are seeing it on the telly now so much that they just what the you know there's a real hunger and appetite out there for 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 getting access to the vaccine and i suppose the other the other side of it is um those conversations that we might have with people that we work with so in my context it might be with foster carers um or for people applying to be foster carers um, and just, uh, I suppose it's about, you know, respectfully understanding their position and their, and their, and their choices around, around, um, around accessing vaccines as well, and, and, and perhaps having some guidance around that for the profession. 
Well, thank you. I, I, I think we're going to draw to a close shortly. Um, I wonder if you have any sort of final words for members or maybe a little bit about your, your hopes for Basel over 2021. Any sort of final thoughts on that, Liz? Yeah, thanks, Ruth. Um, I suppose, again, just going back to what we talked about earlier, what, so what, what's driven me to, to, to put myself forward for, for vice chair? And I think it's, it's because I feel like the social work profession is at a crossroads, really. I think we've got lots of interesting things happening. Um, and I think we're hearing a lot more from, um, you know, we're hearing a lot more from the voice of, of people with lived experience of social work services. And I think, you know, particularly uh, in my area of work, uh, the voice of care, care experienced people. Um, and I think it's really important that Basra as an organisation, um, we continue to, 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 to recognise that and to, and to listen to that and that we align ourselves um, closely to, to, to those groups um, who are representing people with lived experience. So that was one, one ambition for myself. Um, I'm also just very, very aware, again, we've touched on it previously, just around um, the impact of sort of politically chosen austerity um, on our communities in the last uh, 10 years. And I think it's really important that, that Basra has a, continues to have a voice in that area. Basra's done a lot of campaigning, a lot of work um, in that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to put myself forward as somebody who, who recognises that and, and wants to continue that work because I think ultimately um, social work is heavily impacted by inequalities and injustice within society. And I think as a profession, we, we have a valid and legitimate voice in, in raising our concerns around that. Thanks, Lewis. I think that with that final point about the importance of continuing to campaign against poverty and choices that lead to more poverty uh, rather than resolving um, uh, is, is, is a really um, important point to, to end on and I really uh, want to thank you personally for your support um, as an honorary officer on council um, and for those commitments that we can work on together um, over the coming period so great thanks very much for joining me today and um, we'll be back with more vlogs during 2021 bye-bye <laughs>